We're going to show you how to set up alarm-based recording with a professional security camera system from CCTV Camera World. Here I have a PoE-based system. This is a PoE NVR. Let's take a look at the back of this thing. This is a standalone NVR. Right now I do have it connected to my internet, but you don't need to. You can do any of these configurations that I'm going to show you without it being connected to the internet. Here's a power cable, power in the unit. Cable, that's a Cat5, going from a PoE port that's internal for use with plug-and-play cameras from Avalonix with an Avalonix NVR. HDMI out to go to my monitor right there. And a USB cable, go into a mouse. And this two-lead wire here, I'm going to zoom into it. It's connected to the alarm input. So I have the stripe wire connected to one and the solid wire connected to the ground right there. You want to make sure your wire is secure. So if you tug on it, it doesn't come loose. And make sure it has good contacts that you strip wire from to make sure that uh, the copper is inserted securely. That's the most important thing to do here. And then I have hooked up the other part of the wire and I'm, by the way, just using two leads from a Cat5e that I ripped apart. And I've connected to this $1 light switch from Home Depot. And it doesn't matter which way you put the wires in. Polarity does not matter. As long as your settings for the alarm input are set to normal open. I'm going to show you what that means. But when I close this circuit, you hear that beep. That is for the alarm going off and sounding off an internal buzzer inside the NVR. So my camera here the for testing is running over a PoE cable, regular Cat5e patch cable, into the back of the NVR. So to recap, you need an NVR with alarm inputs. You need an Avalonix PoE camera to use with an Avalonix NVR. And you need some wiring that is 23 gauge strands from Cat5e. If you're running a long connection, make sure it's full copper. And then you need a light switch to do this. So when I trigger this light switch, my NVR starts recording. And right now, the timestamp on there is 11.08. So while the switch is in the on position, this will be recording. I'm going to actually turn this off. So it should stop recording at this time. I'm going to use my mouse to go into my NVR's search settings, select my day, which is today. The date and time have to be set correctly. And I'm going to select my channel. So in the timeline, once I've selected this channel, I'm going to go select the time from the timeline. And here we go. And you see that right there. As I was speaking, it was recording me, and it's appearing right there. I can also blow up that timeline a little bit more. And as you can see, it records for the, the time fragments the alarm was on for. Okay. And I can fast forward if I wanted to, more slow. So going at 4x speed and finish recording the clip. How do you set this all up? So if you are wanting to set up a system where you want it to record only for specific time fragments when that switch is on, this is a very convenient way and it's called alarm-based recording. You need that NVR with the alarm input on it. The settings here are pretty simple. Once you've made the hardwired connection, you go into the main menu, you go into alarm, and you go to alarm import, and first decide which port your switch is connected to. So here, if you notice, I'm in port one. That positive wire is going to be a stripe wire, and the negative wire is in the ground. So alarm in port is one. Hit enable. You can give it a name if you wanted to. You can change it. Device type. You have to make sure it's normally open. Because if you select the incorrect setting, it won't record properly. It will be the inverse of whatever you're doing. So my switch right now, 
when it's in this orientation and I hit it to the top, it turns the switch on and starts recording. And this is in the off position. That circuit is normally open until I flip the switch up. Okay? Schedule, make sure everything is highlighted. You can hit all and highlight all of them. By default, it's like this. We're not dealing with an alarm port. Anti-dither is basically how long it'll wait to allow you to have a second event of the same type from occurring. So it's five seconds. You can't, you know, keep doing this. It won't recognize you doing that. It'll wait for five, it'll do a five second timeout. Show message. It will show a message on the NVR. I'll just do that here. Record channel. If you want to record video, that's what this is all for. Make sure you select which channels you're recording. If you had more than one camera, you could just click the one, the ones you want, or you could hit all. In my case, I only have one camera. You can set up to, this to record multiple cameras simultaneously when you turn on your switch. We're not doing PDZ linkage or tour. Now the buzzer is the sound you're hearing from my NVR. If you want to be able to have an audible alert that this is on, you can keep the buzzer option checked. If you once are done recording and or done setting up, you can uncheck it so it doesn't occur anymore. So to showcase this, I'm going to uncheck this. I'm going to now show a message that it's recording. Everything else, just make sure your settings look the same way. Hit apply. Now that's one part of the equation. The second is you need to go under storage and record mode and make sure it's set to auto for your cameras because now you're going to give it a schedule and hit apply after selecting auto. Make sure it's that. Make sure it's not manual because manual means you're recording constantly when it's on manual settings. Make sure it's like that. Hit apply. Go to schedule. And here, if your schedule is green or yellow, you need to change it. You need to basically click this setup icon here, the gear icon, and make sure for zero to 24 hours, you only have alarm checked. If you just want to record only when the alarm is active and hit all and hit OK. And then you'll get this kind of grid. If you basically do something like this, where it's recording only in general, you'll get a green line. I want to change that for all the days. Make sure there's no general because I don't want to record all the time or anything else. I only want to record when the alarm is activated and hit apply. Now you'll get a success message in your case. I haven't changed any settings in my case, so it's not any difference here compared to what it was before. You can change the pre-record time to 10 seconds if you want it or higher, if you want to have a buffer before you started actually hitting the switch because the NVR keeps a buffer in memory. Now let's take a look at the functionality of this setup with instead of a buzzer, we're going to show a message. So I'm going to flip my switch on. And it's showing me this status that, hey, there's an alarm on and it's going to start recording. So if you're doing, let's say, some Twitch streaming and you're using our system to stream directly through OBS or something to Twitch or YouTube, this won't give you any audible alerts. And then when I turn it off, that screen does not go away on its own. You just have to act actually manually exit out by right click. You can always check if your alarm is being sensed by the NVR by going to main menu, then under the alarm configuration and alarm info page and hit search. It'll show you the alarms that are going off for today. So every time I flip that switch, an alarm went off. And if I click on the play button, it'll play the video from that time. Of course, I'm just testing it for short segments. So that's why my segments are only a few seconds long. In case you're recording longer segments of video, it'll be accordingly longer. Now to recap, all you need is a Avalonix PoE and VR and Avalonix PoE camera. You run an ethernet cable to the NVR, connect a monitor, USB mouse, and then of course your camera, and of course here your alarm wire. Hold this for a second.
Now, the main important thing in all of this is connections. Sometimes people have loose connections and it doesn't work. If you look at it here closely, I've got copper here showing on the wire. And you, I exaggerated how much copper I have showing on my wire, but you can reduce it. Just want to make sure these don't keep shorting each other with something else metallic or to each other. That's one. And then on the back of the NVR, if you want to come over and take a look. And on the back of the NVR, your leads have to be very secure. They just can't be popping out. And if you, these are push-in connectors. This one doesn't have screw terminal. So if I put my nail on it, I can pull these wires out. And this is how my lead looks, basically. Now, like I said, we like using 24 gauge CAT 5E or 23 gauge CAT 6 to do this. If you're using thicker wire, you're not gonna get good contacts in there. That's pretty much it. Make sure you have wire that's properly stripped with copper showing. Plug it into the NVR in the right slots. Set it up like I showed you. You should be able to record with alarm-based recording in no time. Hopefully you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.